What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we're doing another realistic style rebuild on Madden 22 and today it is of the Carolina Panthers. Who would have seen this coming? Honestly, I don't think anyone would have guessed we were going to rebuild the Panthers today. I mean, clearly not. But obviously, we know about the Baker Mayfield trade. The Panthers are potentially giving up a fourth round pick. I'm just going to see it as a fourth round pick given up. Because, well, let's be honest, there's a good chance he does play all the snaps for him. And even if he doesn't, I'd rather be wrong in the sense of giving him too much than too little. There's always going to be someone nitpicking, you gave him a fifth when a whole year later from now, it's like, they got a fourth? This is why we don't like you. It's like, well, hell, way, hell, relax. It's just a fourth round pick. But let's at least take a look at the roster. Obviously, Baker is not the craziest overall in Madden, but... Because he's still extremely young, if we were to, uh, you know, keep him around long-term wise, if that's what it comes out to be, we'll change his number, don't worry about it. Uh, we can change his rating based on how he's playing, whether that be up or down. To be honest, in-game, he actually has pretty decent passing ratings. His accuracies are actually pretty decent when considering that's kind of his biggest issue is, is inaccuracy, decision-making. I mean, he's just a very, like, inconsistent guy. I think that's, like, the number one thing you can call him is inconsistent. Uh, at times, he looks amazing. And then other times, he's just like, what What was he thinking? What, what was that? And obviously, they're going to hope for the upside out of him, which, I mean, realistically, at this rate, it kind of just seems like, Grab a bunch of names. I got to put Matt Corral at star as well. Don't worry. Uh, grab a bunch of quarterback names and just hope one of them works out. Like, Darnold has maybe some potential. Eh, probably not, right? Baker, kind of. A little bit more. At least he's a strong arm. And then Matt Corral, the new addition. They at least have an exciting quarterback room, I suppose. Whether that's actually good or not is to be seen. But the one thing that needs to be seen is every player in the x-ray room. Because these guys are literally always injured. If this team can stay healthy, Baker probably has his best weapons team he's ever had. Robbie's a talent when he's healthy. DJ Moore is obviously very good. Christian McCaffrey, who knows at this rate, he's been always injured, but I mean, at once upon a time was considered the best running back for a very short period of time in the league. Uh, you know, the offensive line is quote unquote improving. You know, Quano is a great name. Moten has been very solid for them for years now. I uh, can't, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't really remember the interior being great, but it's okay, I guess. As far as a rebuild sense goes, Tommy Tremble probably will be good enough for us to start long term. And then defense, a weird team, maybe it's based because of the offense, but a team that actually gave up, you know, kind of low numbers for, you know, the traditional stats like yards and whatnot and third down percentage, whatever, but they gave up a decent bit of points. But once again, that could be the offense. The more you're out there, the more susceptible you are to giving up points, obviously, especially if it's like short field situations. But, uh, you know, Brian Burns is considered one of those great talents. I still think people are a little overhyped on him, to be honest. Like, he's considered this great name. And I'm not somebody that looks at the sacks. That's not the reason why I'm saying it. It's just like he gets so much credit despite like, yeah, I mean, he's good. But is he like Aaron Donald 2.0? No. So can we relax a little bit? They have potential. They have a lot of talent, but they need, speaking of Baker Mayfield, more consistency. Shaq Thompson is probably their most consistent defender, if you will. Uh, Jeremy Chin's decent. J.C. Horn was looking pretty good before. Guess what? Guess what word I'm going to say? Injury, because that's literally all this team knows, obviously. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they have a lot of speed at corner. Once upon a time, it feel, felt like they had five super beasts at corner, but instead... You know, they kind of lose some of those names. Stephon Gilmore going is not a shock, but, I mean, for a team that really loves their cornerbacks, it seems, I thought maybe they would have tried to keep them around. But regardless, it's a team that in Madden has a ton of potential. As far as real life goes, they also have a ton of potential. But once again, the health issues, they got to go. But it's not really something you can necessarily control. But speaking of Baker, we obviously see that we had an upgrade for him. So we're going to go with Field General to start her off. See if we can get something juiced. And wow. If that's going to, uh, you know, tell us anything about how this rebuild's going to go, this could be a long one. Of course, uh, we know for some reason Chuba Hubbard's glitched in to be a star on, out the gate right away if you choose that on the mentor rookies. So, I mean, I'll take freebies any day. <laughs> Which, speaking of, leave a like and subscribe. Those are, yeah, it's free to do. See? Decent segue into uh, the, the pleading. Hey, Derek Brown, not bad actually, gets his camp standout. No playbook changes, but uh, 
kind of turn it around on the season now as far as, uh, you know, Mr. Matthew Ioannidis goes. I actually have to take a look at his contract. I thought it was like a two-year 10, but I'm not 100% sure. That was a one-year, so uh, a three-year 25 at 27 isn't terrible. It's not the hardest position to develop, but we'll allow it, I suppose. Of course, as far as Baker goes, does he need a contract in real life? Like, surely he needs a contract coming up here, right? It's kind of a weird spot. Yeah, he needs a contract this year, so do I just wait for the game to do it then? I don't even know. We'll see. It's a pretty big game. If we win, we might win the division, and I... No, we do not. That is harsh. As long... Here, I'm a petty person, all right? I don't... Oh, they did. I was about to say, I don't really care if, you know, we don't get the division. As long as they don't get a bye week, and they absolutely did... That is all that mattered to me is that they didn't get a bye week. And what do they get? A damn bye week, of course. Take a look at the season, which was really bad to start. Uh, you know, one and three. I was like, uh oh. And we went, well, we lost a couple games here at the end, but we finished the season really well. Stayed with the scheme all the way. No changes to anything. Not even the defense, not even the, the offensive scheme. It was multiple, whatever the hell. There was one week I did change it because we had a QB breakout and we barely won the game and he just didn't get it. Uh, but let's take a look at the season. Before we do anything with Baker. And I gotta say, even though the picks are a little high, that's kind of like two year 50 category to me. I think with Baker's current situation, I think he takes a two year 50. I'm just saying, I think he does. But of course, McCaffrey we've seen was, I mean, absolutely insane. What a damn season. Receiving Robbie Anderson was pretty good. Please be superstar for the love of God, Robbie. Uh, DJ Moore was decent. Terrace Marshall was okay. Tremble was pretty damn good. And McCaffrey was honestly probably MVP of the entire league. Obviously, you can maybe argue we should have injuries on for this. But at the same time, with injuries on, you, oh, Tim, Brian finally got the double digits he was looking for. But it's just so random, you know? I just, like, you can't tell. Like, maybe it actually benefits us and other teams' players that don't ever get injured get injured. And ours don't, right? But Jeremy Chen, number uh, six picks, six for Thompson. It could be DevOps for both, which would be amazing. San Gonzalez was iffy. Johnny Hecker, of all people, was actually pretty iffy, too. And let's take a look. It's got to be McCaffrey. That was a crazy season. And he wins it. Nice. Matt Rule, of course, the coach of the year. Uh, offensive player of the year. Defensive player of the year, Robert Quinn uh, over Aaron Donald. Uh, anyone on our list? No. Rookie of the year awards? No quarterback where was our man number eight that's i mean kind of iffy running back mccaffrey uh, anything else robbie anderson at three that should be dev up worthy then uh, o-line I, I mean maybe like one the right tackle that's about it uh linebacker no db surprisingly linebacker no but pan, you know chin at three and uh wait Shaq wasn't on the list for linebackers do they just not value picks at all excuse me all right the Packers have two overalls on us as Cleveland is back in the playoffs with Watson, who, I mean, you know, <laughs> doesn't really look super strong to play this year, but, of course, it's Madden, I guess. If they make the Super Bowl, maybe we'll bench him. I, like, I don't know what to do, because like, if you bench him and then we're in the Super Bowl, then it's kind of bad. But I was about to say, as this game was starting, that this is kind of the team that the Packers would lose to. A team that you would be like, ah, oh, this is easy for a team like the Packers. You got the great Rodgers and this and that. But, you know, you sleep on the team a bit. Guys? Thank you. <laughs> Please. You sleep on the team a little bit and you don't take it as seriously. And then you just blow it. I don't know. But overall, I don't really care how it happens for them as we win Baker Mayfield showing up to the big dance with his big boy shoots, uh, shoots on, shoes on, and a suit. I don't know why I'm just imagining him with clown shoes on, which I, like, I'm sorry, Baker. I'm not trying to make fun of you, uh, even though I, it clearly sounds like I am. Uh, let's take a look at the sack totals. Dean Lowry of all players. Okay. Brian Burns with one and a half. I mean, not bad. JC Horn and Xavier Woods with picks. Pretty good stuff, actually. A pretty good performance all across the board. Now, that's an upgrade. Plus four to medium route. It only puts him at 70, but I can kind of see why these tight ends get really, really good route running by the time this uh, the rebuilds are over, despite the fact that their catch is like barely 90 if lucky. But let's go to the division around where we may be playing the Buccaneers. It is not. It is the Cowboys, but a breakout, which 
It's for Xavier Woods, who just had an interception. That'd be kind of clutch for him. Be nice to see him dev up. Especially with his XP, maybe like 10, 20k if we're lucky, but that's beside the point. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Going up against the Cowboys, who are also two overalls higher than us. But once again, we've seen how we handle the Packers, and I'm feeling good. Damn it, dude. The Browns keep winning. Watson will probably not play this upcoming season, but I'm not a jury. I'm not the league. I'm not anyone. You know, I'm just I'm just a guy with a rocket launcher. And I said guy. Trust me. It was... I'm not going to say what the meme actually is. Up by seven. Tied up now. in a really bad turnover, it looks like. I don't imagine we're going to win this game. It's still a hell of a start to the rebuild, but unfortunately, we are not making it to the next round. Did Xavier Woods get a scenario, though? That's, that's a fun, interesting thing, right? Baker Mayfield, not bad. Not great. I mean, it is bad, but when you're considering, you know, where this team was before and... Do you actually see them being a t I thought it was Terrence Williams. I was like, how is he back? Uh, but, you know, do you really see this team getting this far with or without Baker? I don't know, to be honest. But let's go out, out back out, and then take a look at Xavier Woods. I didn't see him get a pick, but maybe got a tackle for a loss or a forced fumble, sack, whatever the hell they allow you to get for the scenarios. I don't think he actually got it, but that would be clutch if he did. But yeah, that does hurt, losing that game there. And damn it, Xavier Woods. Against his former team as well, you would think he would want it even more. But thankfully, it is not the Browns in there. It's the Raiders versus the Cowboys. And the winner of this one is the Cowboys by a very small margin. Let's take a look at the dev ups we had. I'm thinking Baker maybe had a chance at it. And he did. Robbie also went up to Superstar, which is clutch. Let's take a look at Baker, uh, who has Inside Deadeye, Superstar Dev, and Roaming Deadeye. I mean... Talk about godly upgrades, I suppose. Baker kind of fitting in well. And once again, this is the Christian McCaffrey show. Baker Mayfield's fine with directing that show. He doesn't mind. Of course, Derek Brown and Shaq Thompson go up in dev. I'm not really sure how Derek Brown did. Maybe he had a lot of tackles for a loss. But Shaq Thompson, definitely a huge dub as he's 28 years old. Doesn't drop any overalls. Once again, even if you become an X-Factor, linebacker does develop or regress anyways pretty quickly and... Kind of harshly, but whatever it takes. The little bit, you know, the little wins of going to Superstar when you're an older star dev guy is still nice. Chin didn't go up and dev with those picks, which is harsh, but overall, it's still a pretty good team and a great season. So these are our re-signings. We're going to let all of these guys go. I was debating on keeping uh, Bozeman, but I was like, you know what? We're kind of broke. I'd rather spend money on not a pretty average linebacker, below average linebacker, uh, lineman anyways and I would just draft one but also we're going to allow ourselves to release Sam Darnold as he would need a proper contract as of last season and uh, you know it is now a season forward so Matt Corral is the backup PJ Walker is a backup and then Baker as the now starter maybe the foreseeable future starter who you know he had a pretty good season so we're kind of looking for center, left guard, linebacker, and safety. If we can get a few of those, that'd be great. Brady, once again, just do your announcer ship and leave us alone. We've had enough. Please. Of course, looking at some of the other names here, not really seeing you know those those kind of impact players. J.C. Treader, I feel like the Rams is a very good fit. I feel like that's a very good fit team. I'm not even going to get in the way of this. I'm going to let it just happen. Even the Dolphins, not terrible. Seattle, I think it's a bit too late, uh, and I also think that for him, it's a bit too late in his career to join a team that's still got too many question marks. Um, yeah, I'm going to be kind of mad if he goes there, though, because I could have also fought. Roger Saffold is in free agency. I need a lineman, but I, I mean, can I just draft two, right? We'll have okay picks. We have our first, second, and third I mean, if I draft linemen, linemen something, we're fine, right? We don't really need linemen. And even then, we have Elfline if we had to actually use him. I think we're good. I think we're we're fine. And as far as the other positions go, I mean, it would be nice to grab a wide receiver in the draft. But Terrace might get a chance to start. He's still pretty damn young. I mean, it's okay. We're okay. We're fine. Let's relax. But it is also kind of hard for me to pass on uh, Chris Barnes because he's Pretty good in coverage, actually, and his block shed is definitely developable at 24. And he's only asking for a three-year, like, 20, maybe. I don't know what the Patriots are willing to offer him. Kind of feels like a Patriot, though, speaking of Treader. 
Uh, we could use a linebacker. We could use multiple linebackers, realistically. We could start one now and then. Shaq Thompson's not too far off. Even with superstar dev, he's not too far off of retirement. So I'm going to go Chris Barnes. I think he's an okay fit. And yeah, we'll draft everything else. But it'd actually be kind of nice because I don't really like the linebacker class for this. Uh, maybe they're okay in real life, but for this, you know, real life class that we use for 2023. Fifth year option for Brian Burns. Um. I feel like it's a yes, but at the same time for us, it's going to be super expensive. Uh, I mean, he seems good, but the numbers that he's putting up for us kind of signifies that we could probably get him under 20 per, whereas if he broke out on a fifth-year option, it would kind of be sucky. Also, he may have had the fifth-year option in real life, so either way, I'm just going to say no. So it's always kind of fun to see where teams go, but the Lions were one overall with Bryce Young. The Vikings being two overall is probably a little unrealistic, but... Hey, if they go quarterback, they go quarterback. They do. Denver is going to be taking a tight end. Really over Will Anderson. Sure. Jets landing steals left and right. Yep, I figured. Okay, I mean, fair enough. Well, we're going to land alignment no matter what. The question is, who do we want? As apparently, we're going to have a choice of the matter. Uh, I didn't really pay attention too much to the actual, uh, you know, each position. I just kind of know the class a little bit. Dalcourt is a center. Do you prioritize center over a guard? When it's this clear cut, you might. You might, right? Matthew Jones, we've drafted a few times. I'm pretty sure he's star. But Dalcourt, I don't remember if we've ever drafted him. I'm going to go with Dalcourt, I think. Clear cut, good center. I'm just going to have him on the squad. Hidden development trait, pretty athletic, 21 years old. Maybe even superstar, perhaps. Putnam goes right before us. I imagine we still have some other linemen anyways, but... Don't technically need a lineman if we don't want one. EJ Williams, I don't remember ever seeing anything on him, but he was the uh, prospect spotlight thing. I also have literally nothing on him, sadly. So I don't think I'm going to go that route, unfortunately. This guy probably is someone that probably goes a little bit later. He's a 3-4, to four, but the uh, the A, the B, the B, and the B. Okay, athleticism. Uh, gets me enough going to grab him. And he is hidden, so I don't know if I've ever actually dra you know, grabbed Nick Ford before, but that is a new name, I suppose. I feel like that name is familiar, but I think I've just seen a lot of Fords lately. We give 91 and 155 with a 6 next year to move up to 73, which we're going to be grabbing that Humphreys wide receiver. He's 21 years old, six foot five, add some more height to the team. Uh, he's a little raw, but once again, he can sit for a year when Robbie's still going to be the starter, and I don't hate the choice, so see, see... You know, some okay speed, I suppose, for his size. Hidden development trade, 89 speed in 90 XL. I'm not going to act crazy excited because I did remember him being hidden, and I was mad about it last time, too. I was like, oh, kind of wasted because now the next time I use him, it's going to be like, oh, well, he knew he was hidden. This is cheating. It's like, well, stop yelling, okay? I know more about the random classes than I do about this class, and I've used this class many times. That that just proves how easy it is, the tendencies-wise, to draft in the CPU classes. <laughs> Gainor! Nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know. This guy's got a bunch of Ds, but he also has a very good athletic build, even though he's 170. I'm just going to grab him, you know. Decently fast, like expected, but he is probably going to get bullied around like me in the 7th grade. It's not even true at all. Yeah, that's what someone that got bullied in the seventh grade would say. And we're going to grab a punter. This guy just out of nowhere randomly. Oh, wow. Hidden. Who would have thought? Like I said, there are some positions I know of a decent bit of players, but I actually drafted some new guys. Dalcorn at some point we may have dropped. Thank you. We may have grabbed, but Ford I never grabbed. Humphreys we've grabbed, but never used. Never used couch. Never grabbed couch. Uh, never laid on a couch. Uh, but Headley, we we did know about. Actually, don't know if Dalcourt's superstar or not. Doesn't matter to me because obviously he's starting regardless if he's superstar or star. Hell, if he's X Factor, whatever it is, he's starting no matter what. But I'm curious. A little by yourself time is great for the soul. Uh, Darian Dalcourt, let's take a look. I mean, Ford, I'm almost guaranteeing his star, but this guy could actually be superstar. And he's not. Okay, I'm a little surprised. I actually thought the way he was built, the whoever made him probably is going to make him uh, superstar, but I guess not. And then this guy will be playing left guard for us as 
we kind of have the offensive line situated now. Are we are with year two of the Baker Mayfield saga, two-year $50 million deal incoming. Obviously not incoming, it's literally already happened. Uh, but this is what the squad looks like. You know, we got a bunch of wide receivers flying around here. Uh, Olan is literally set. Even Corbett, I think, is, yeah, only 26. He's 80 overall. He's actually very solid across the board. I mean, I'd ought to say Moten would be the first guy, uh, repl you know, replaced on the line before him. Uh, defensively, uh, looking at, uh, you know, the D-line. Ioannidis, we did give him that three-year deal. He's probably the most replaceable guy outside of the strong safety era, you know, at this moment. With Shaq Thompson not too far behind, but lots of potential, especially with Brown adding himself to the superstar list. Chin, no matter what his dev is, he's going to be very high overall, no matter what. Dante Jackson is probably going to be the same. What is he, 26? That's fine. J.C. Horn and Henderson, we got a lot of youth. The problem now is, can we afford the team? Big names, big names. Hopefully we have some money, though, of course. We are just talking about Brian Burns being a, uh, you know, about $20 million per year type of guy. I feel like that's probably fair, right? We'll do a five-year 103. I'd say that's probably what he's looking for. You know, good players at positions that last into their 30s, like early 30s, usually want that money, you know, to go away when they're 29, 30, so then they can still sne steal one more solid, uh, you know, re-signing out, of course. I'm surprised we're not seeing other names, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, CJ Henderson, I thought, would have been here by now. Uh, but I guess not. I don't know if they gave him a real-life deal or not. But you know, a little surprised he's not here. Zane Gonzalez was a bit iffy for us. But if he plays well, I'll give him a contract, right? Uh, so far, not so good. No competition this time for the division. And even though we were 12-5, and five, we don't uh, have the uh, blessing of a bye week like the Buccaneers did last season. But still a really good season nonetheless. And once again, unless I'm missing something, we have the exact same playbooks on it. Uh, as before, I mean, literally the exact same, haven't changed a single thing, and so far, Baker and the, you know, team have been kind of rolling with it, obviously, you're not seeing Christian McCaffrey this time, Anthony Richardson also kind of left there in the first round for a while, still really good, Baker really good, speaking of, 40 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 4,400 yards, rushing, McCaffrey a little bit less touchdowns, but still really good yardage anyways, DJ Moore was solid, but everyone else a little iffy, once again, it's always the Christian McCaffrey show, but the main importance is the win-loss column, which seems to constantly be doing really well. Of course, linemen were decent. Uh, seen a couple of high pick numbers here. Brian Burns with a five-year of 100 and what, three or whatever it was deal, putting up 16 and a half. Everyone else, though, very disappointing, specifically Yatour. Without a doubt, the most disappointing. My, Matthew Ioannidis, also very close up on that list as well. Uh, interceptions weren't crazy. Zane Gonzalez was okay. Maybe he deserves that contract. If he wants it still, you know, as the season's ending, I suppose we'll sign him up, put him on the dotted line. Actually, I want to see the awards real quick. I'm not sure who we would have had on that list. We we got a bunch of boring picks, but important ones, you know, linemen mainly. Uh, let's take a look. You know, Christian McCaffrey is still that guy. Uh, and Baker Mayfield, best quarterback in the entire NFC. Best running back as well. Number three wide receiver. O-line on the list, number 6, 9, and 10. I mean, it's it's only going up from here. Of course, I think with us already doing a Panthers rebuild not even that long ago, I think the goal is just going to simply be to win the Super Bowl. So if or when we do that, I think that will be... Oh, hey, now you're a rock star. Is it all-star? I don't know, whatever. Uh, I think that'll be when we uh, call it. But once again, as usual... Multiple overalls less than our opponent. Let's see if we can at least get to the divisional again as we get a nice turnover with a touchdown shortly after. At least get the divisional, maybe improve to the championship. As long as we're seeing improvements, I mean, I'll take it, obviously. 17-14, uh, to 14, the Buccaneers, nice little touchdown before half there. Uh, up by six, but anyone's game, as you can see here, we're now down by one. Tampa moving nicely. I don't know if they re-signed Tom, but they're looking pretty good nonetheless. And a nice drive, topped off with a touchdown, but failed two-point, which could end up losing the game. How much time is left? The answer appears to be not enough, but they might have two. It's Anthony Richardson, so that's who's been doing well for them, which in fairness to us, he's really good. So it's a win for us to be in a good spot, maybe even two win, 
and they'll have one more chance at it. Of course, we could obviously just let it sim, and they would literally lose, but it's a little more fun and realistic this way. Also, Barnes. Oh, Chris Barnes. I was thinking of Kalen Barnes, who's like super speedly. No pressure at all, so... Oh, there he goes. Nice! Unlikely chance, and yes. No touchdown for you. Good hit. Anthony Richardson with a ton of attempts there, but unfortunately for them, it is not going to be enough as we will win this game. Not much better for Baker, but I suppose a little bit more accurate rushing. Uh, not much better than them in that either, to be honest. It's just a really close game that we just barely outscored them on. Matthew Ioannidis finally showing up. It has been really silent for us in this one so far. How much do you want to bet speed upgrade? I will bet anything on this as a speed upgrade. Please, let me keep the car. Please. Of course, I really, I don't know why I just felt it. I don't even know what Dante's speed is. It's got to be like 96, 97. CJ Henderson. You always go, was that zone actually? I was about to say always go slot, but I think that actually was zone. And last time we did possession, medium rot was insane with a plus four. Uh, not so much this time. Nick Ford. Let's go with... Oh, they're going pass... I mean, it's, as long as it's not agility when you're on the interior, it's a dub in my book. Oh, my God. Run block is so bad. The Trey Lance-led San Francisco 49ers, who are an 11-6 team, tying us at 86 overall and quite possibly have the more complete team. And if maybe not more complete, at least bigger superstars. Let's see if we can win it. Of course, another really good start to the game where we get a stop and a touchdown and then another touchdown right after... 14-0, to 21-0. to We've seen this against Green Bay, though, where we kind of choked, which that's a team that usually doesn't make a comeback. 35-10, <laughs> to 10, and, I mean, this kind of seems over. This Panthers playbook is kind of juicing right now. 42-10, to 42-17, to 49-17. And, wow, we really uh, didn't look back on this team. It's, it's a team that is not going to be able to score with you much. They just lock you down. But, of course... When you put up points, it's a GG. They're never going to catch up. Six touchdowns to zero interceptions. Of course, his passer rating still isn't that great, though, because he missed so many passes. But that's Baker for you. He'll deliver some big-time throws, but also just shock you with some awful reads. But luckily for us, he threw to a lot of the big names. And uh, ultimately, we ended up winning the game by a wide margin. Of course, that's the guy I was talking about, Keelan Barnes. Zane Gonzalez, please don't miss. I had a really weird thought in my head of like, what if you yell someone's name loud enough that their brain somehow picks up on that and like it just, it just like lights up. I don't know. Like it doesn't affect them. It just lights up. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying at this rate, but plus two overall. That's, I mean, that's kind of cool. I should have saved it actually for when he regresses. Not that I care too much, but Robbie Anderson is that deep threat. His catching sucks though. But it kind of seems like catching is random no matter what you choose. So let's see what we get. And two to deep route. Yeah, I mean, it's a good route runner. I suppose if you get open enough, especially with that speed, that may mean more than having good catch, right? I guess you just burn people and, you know, let uh, DJ Moore do the rest. I thought I still seen the Packers. I'm not 100% censure them. And it is. But I will say, we did beat them. So a chance, nonetheless. 87 to their 84 overall. Rodgers still there, unfortunately. Although this is the championship game, so can't wait to face the Patriots next week. That's going to be fun. Of course, defense keeping up with the tradition of stopping them early, short, and the offense having a shorter field to work with. Of course, 14 all. This is a much closer game, but the offense is still on absolute fire. Gasoline is constantly being thrown in. And this team is going to head to the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. This could be a quick rebuild. And honestly, I didn't really expect it to be. Of course, Baker Mayfield with his worst performance yet in the playoffs, like by far. I mean, he had a couple of bad ones, but that was you know, two interceptions, not good. But we were able to put up more rushing touchdowns in general. McCaffrey, did he, yeah, he had a big run. I figured he did. Uh, Sammy Watkins, who's just like juiced in the game, like he just does well. Whoever the number one wide receiver is in sim for the Packers just does well no matter what. Who is Helms? Because I don't like him. Two interceptions, dude. Santos missed a kick. It probably didn't matter, but at least uh, Zane hit both of his. Kish McCaffrey is actually already maxed, which doesn't necessarily surprise me. Plus two to trucking. Uh, 67 trucking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense because, you know, look at the, the receiving ability and... 
Juke can spin 93 95. That's really all you need. Brian Burns is already a great actual pass rusher, so let's get him uh, pass rushing the running back. That's something people say. Three to block shed still only puts him at 75, so yeah, he desperately has a long way to go in the run defense department without a doubt. Like, he is, he's got some time. Oh my, speed! For Jeremy Chin, 95 speed. He's still very raw in the, like, intelligence levels, like zone and all that. But as far as, like, pure athleticism goes, he is a bullet. Like a 50 cal bullet. Like, he's huge and fast. Let's take a look at our dev ups. I'm trying to think of anyone that we would have had. Baker, possibly. No, Baker, really. I'm a little surprised by that. Uh, and then defensively, Shaq Thompson is an X-Factor. Barnes is a superstar. And unfortunately, that's the only dev ups. But at the same time, outside of Burns, I don't think we deserved any other dev ups. So we'll take what we can get. And of course, I do want to see who the Patriots had to play because I kind of paid attention to them early on. Uh, they they had a lot of games to play. Of course, going up against the Steelers, winning by quite a bit in that one. The what is this? The Colts by ten, and then the Titans by seven, getting a little bit of revenge on them for sending Tom Brady away. Oh, wow. Is this route running always this good, or he just develop being, like, the kind of backup talent? Because I mean, it seems kind of beastly. Shaq Thompson, I imagine, is pretty good in everything. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's decent in everything. I suppose run stopper is probably the most important thing to continue your career once you become maybe too slow to keep up in coverage. You always want to at least be valuable somewhere, right? Hey, I'm a good caterpillar counter. That'll always be a high-demand job, obviously. But here we are going up against the Patriots. Up three overalls on them. Finally, some positivity here for overalls. And it's still not going to matter. Watch. All right. I mean, we've been a little bit up and down. Another. We've literally all four games have gotten us quick stop and scored right out the gate. It's literal destiny. I was about to say, we're a little up and down, but it also kind of seems like it's destiny for the Patriots to win. But at this point, I think that whole argument is long gone. And it is 21-3. to the Patriots are going to get stomped. And Baker Mayfield is going to win a Super Bowl as a Carolina Panther only in his second year on the team. $25 million to win a Super Bowl is not terrible money for the Panthers. I'll tell you what. A fourth-round pick on top of it, not I mean, not terrible, right? Giving up a fourth-round pick and 25 mil for a Super Bowl title, not awful. Not awful, of course. The question marks were there. They're still even there, even though he put up a really good regular season. You can see some of those games, the playoffs, were a little iffy. Like, zero touchdowns, one interception. It's kind of like, oh, Baker's back. Damn it, dude. We're done for. Uh, but putting those to rest and winning a ring where he's kind of appreciated. I mean, I will say, like, Browns fans aren't, like, they weren't appreciative of him as they probably should have considering their history with quarterbacks but at the same time when you got a guy that's throwing across like you know just literally can't actually hit the broad side of a barn sometimes it's frustrating I get that I actually don't get that I as a Packers fan I've literally only watched Favre and Rodgers but you know <laughs> I've I've seen backups play every so often I get it <laughs> of course um what else do we have? Uh, you know, it's a pretty good game by Baker. Putting up a pretty solid Super Bowl performance. Was it perfect? It was very close to, if not 120.9. A little surprise. Uh, yeah, yards on this one is a little bit low, but touchdown to pick ratio is amazing because it's 4 to 0. Mac Jones got locked. It's just a really good team effort led by Baker, of all people. And, I mean, I didn't change any of his ratings. We were going to, and we just didn't need to. He played well without them. He got up in dev in overall because, you know, he's still pretty young. 26, we got him at. So, not terrible. I think the real problem with the Carolina Panthers is they have maybe too much potential at quarterback that it's going to be hard to, you know, okay, do we? how much time do we give each guy, you know? Like, let's say Baker's the starter for week one, and it's week three, and it's kind of choppy. Do you already already cut the freaking you know cord? Like it's it's tough because you have so many guys that have potential and they're all young enough to where they could easily still become franchise quarterbacks. But as far as this rebuild goes, I assume it's over. I mean, there's not really much more to do. We're gonna lose Robbie Anderson. Uh, some of the other guys are gonna start regressing. You know, Shaq Thompson's gonna be gone. He's a huge part of this team. Uh, Yatura Gross Matos is just like a complete L. 
He's an absolute straight up L. 81, uh, you know, power move. He's really just not good for us. I'd have to redraft that position as Barno's already 24. It's a little too late for him to start, I think. Insane athleticism, but just a little too, uh, you know, slow for us to develop him at this rate. But corners, Dante Jackson and Horn, they held it down. Chin was great every single season for us. Brandon Smith really never had a chance. He barely played. I mean, he played, but, you know, he barely played as in his career is only just starting uh, of course, they seem to be developing him as a pure block shedder, but let's see what his tackling is anyways. Um, tackles, uh, two interceptions, three and a half sacks, you know, 100 plus tackles per season. It's all right stuff. Derek Brown's been very disappointing, obviously. Bur Burns is like the only good player, apparently, on the defense. Woods still here. I actually kind of like him. Barnes was decent. Shaq was pretty good. Christian McCaffrey, literally. I mean, Baker did carry at times, but McCaffrey is... Quite a bit of this offense, of course. Aquano, 88 over already. How have they been developing him? Power blocker on the edge. Yeah. I'm stoked, man. Dalcourt, obviously, uh, power blocking, pass blocking. Good player, actually. Pretty well developed so far. And, you know, he's really young still, obviously. Tommy Tremble, 85 catching, 90. I mean, I, I kind of almost want to do one more season, but... At the same time, the, the the goal is to win a Super Bowl, right? So, I don't know. Maybe I'll do an outro. If, uh, you know, I feel like we can add another season, I'll add one. If not, that'll pretty much be it. Obviously, there'll be no upload tomorrow. It is actually my birthday tomorrow in general. And I also just don't upload on Fridays anyways at this rate. So, yeah, happy birthday me. Getting older at this point in my life is great. I love it. I'm a fun <laughs> but we'll have two uploads most likely on saturday and then another rebuild on sunday most likely the bills don't know if i want to put out another fantasy draft rebuild but it could also be the rebuild of that perfect fantasy draft guide that i did recently i'm gonna get back to reading and uh, responding to comments very shortly and that's about it hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did maybe leave a like subscribe if you're new Follow me on Twitter, channel PKR, second channel PKR plays. And let me know how you guys think uh, this Carolina quarterback situation will go. I'm not going to just simply say, oh, do you, how well do you think Baker is going to play? Because he might not even get the job. A fourth round pick slash fifth round pick. So, you know, once again, if he doesn't play up to 70% of the snaps, it's a fifth round pick. That's not terrible just to have that crazy depth on the team, especially since I think the Browns are paying the majority of the contract anyways. Uh, you know, he might not even start. It'll be a nice, fun quarterback battle. I'd imagine it's going to go... Uh, Baker, Darnold, Corral, maybe trade off Darnold, you know, to kind of, you know, whatever happens in uh, training camp and all that, but could be fun to see as, uh, once again, like I said, if the Panthers are healthy, they actually have some weapons on offense, so who knows, once again, a lot of talent on defense, if they have an offense that can actually stay on the field, maybe they become a super, super sleeper, I mean, with or without Baker, it's a team that I don't think is good for a Madden franchise because they have so much young, good talent. So take that how you will. Regardless, could be fun to watch the Panthers, and that's going to be it. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video, 